Yum, yum. Greg here from Pixel Fondue. This video is about the first light kit for Moto. It's by the Third Guild and it's 10 bucks. And I'm making this video because I really like it. In fact, there's one feature in here in particular that I see myself uh, using probably for every project. It's just like, it's a, it's a sort of a no brainer feature that I sort of wonder why it's not in um, more 3D programs just by default. But yeah, it's really good. So it, like I said, it's 10 bucks. I'm gonna put the link in the description and I'm just gonna go into Moto and light a couple of scenes using these tools to show you how it works. All right, so here we are in Moto. I've got a Loki helmet. This was downloaded from Sketchfab and the attributions will be in the description below. I typically do product renders, but in this case, I'll be doing a uh, Loki render because I thought this uh, model was really cool. And right now it looks really ugly, right? Because there's no lights in the scene at all. There's no air lights, no other kind of lighting. There's no HDR, just this sort of ugly gradient. So remember how ugly this looks right now because we're gonna make it look a lot better with some area lights using uh, a first light for Moto. So when you install the kit, um, you get this button right here on your create tab of your panel here, which, which makes sense because you're creating lights and manipulating lights and here you're creating geometry is the closest thing we have to a creation panel. I actually put it up here in my uh, workbench as well because I'm not always on this panel or this even this sub panel of this panel. So it's, it's good to put up in the workbench. I actually may try to remove it from here because I like extra space for my tool properties. I'll see if I can ask the, um, the developer to maybe respond to a, in the comment section to describe how to remove it from there. It's probably just a, a quick config edit, I'm guessing, but that's kind of you know, neither here nor there. When you install it, it's right here. And you can put it in your workbench if you want to. To activate it, you just click it and you get a panel with some options right here. And the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna knock down the background gradient to just a really almost black. So there's really nothing there. And I'm going to use this feature. Let me just go to wireframe mode. I'm gonna, you can see my camera right there. I'm gonna use this feature that allows me to create an aerial light from the perspective view, which this is the feature I'm talking about that I see myself using in pretty much every production. It's just such a no brainer feature where I just sort of pick where I want this key light to be based on uh, this perspective view. And I click from view, I can pick a color. I'll just go white here and an area light or whatever kind of lights you want. And then you just hit create light and there it is right there. If I want a uh, fill light on the other side of the helmet, like right over here, just navigate over there and hit uh, create light from view. Boom, got one on that side. If I want a top down sort of fill light over here like this, again, just create light from view. We'll make this one green. This Loki's kind of got this green thing going on and uh, create light. And there it is, we've got a green sort of uh, light up top. So let me pull out, and you can see all the lights here in the scene. And I'm just gonna actually grab all three of them and just using many props, I'm gonna you know, pop up my, uh, my space bar here and do add draw options. I'm just gonna make these a different color because I think they're not super visible in the uh, Moto viewport, both are default gray color. So there they are. And of course you can use all your regular Moto uh, tools on them, like Omni Hall. Now, if you don't see the Omni Hall icons, and again, this is a bit of a Moto problem where it sometimes drops the Omni Hall icons. You can just reload those by saying load from default over here. See if we can get that bug fixed, or maybe even do a hotkey to load up the defaults if uh, they don't load up there by default or load up there automatically. But you know, pressing C for channel hall, you can do things like you know adjust the uh, width or heights of these area lights, just sort of built in with hauling or the intensity with right mouse buttons. So you have some nice sort of you know moto centric uh, rules for moving lights anyway. And so again, if you move any Alt S or go to Selection Action Center, you can move along the axis. Again, just built in moto tools for moving your lights around are pretty nice uh, as is, but they're really cool when you use these place highlight and aim at surface tools here in uh, uh, first light. So I'm actually going to select my helmet. And I'm going to isolate it here in the viewport. Now the reason I'm isolating it is these two tools work by, you know, finding a, a polygon underneath your mouse. And when you have these giant four or plain polygons, it kind of distorts the calculations there and it wants to kind of stick to those big ones. So if you just isolate your hero product or whatever you're trying to light there and then turn on your aim at surface, you'll want to have a um, uh, area light selected first and go aim at surface. And then you just drag across the surface. Let me go back to the advanced viewport here and I just click and drag and then you see that little blue uh, circle there. If, actually, if I pull back, you can see it happening in real time. It's just moving that area light based on where I'm moving 
the little blue circle. So I've got this you know, highlight right here. In fact, if I hide these other two lights, you can just isolate this one. And again, just see it sort of gliding across the surface, right? And you can use Octane. I'm using Octane here, but of course you can use the Moto Render as well. Works great with Octane. So you just kind of put this wherever you want it. So I'm going to actually just sort of stick it on this side like a sort of a, a key light on the side of the helmet. And then you can you see this other little blue arrow here to adjust the distance, right? So you can you know go back or whatever, make it bigger. It's an area light. And again, like if you want to do um, uh, Omni Hall, I just, you know, load up the defaults if you don't see the icons. Press C for channel hall and I can, you know, adjust my uh, size of this guy if I want to. So let's turn on another light and I don't have to actually come up here to all the way over here to the other side of the screen if I don't want to because I have a nice little light list right here that's automatically filtered to show just lights. So I can turn on my other lights here. So let's say I'm going to do um, this fill light over here and this time instead of uh, using aim at surface, let's do place highlight. And first thing I'm going to do actually to make this a little more obvious, I'm going to make my highlight a sort of non-square size. Now it's a rectangle. And again, I just click place highlight and I come in here and I just drag along the surface. So if I want to highlight right here on this horn, I just click on the horn there and there's my highlight. In fact, let me hide this other light so we can just really focus in on this one. So I'm just dragging along my scene here. And if I look through my camera view, you'll see that, well, actually, let me get a, better, a little better placement here. So let me drag it across here. I'm just showing you that the advanced viewport does a really good job. Let me actually open up a bottom viewport here. Does a good job of showing where that highlight is. So if I'm in the advanced view here and I'm dragging along like this, you'll see that these highlights in the advanced view really match up well to the highlights in Octane or the, or the uh, uh, Moto Render. But you actually have to do the dragging in a perspective viewport rather than the camera viewport. I'm not sure it works quite as well. Actually, it works okay in the camera viewport. Maybe that's, the uh, doc say you should use the perspective, but works pretty fine in the camera viewport if you ask me. So yeah, there's our highlight. In fact, I don't need this open anymore. If I want, I can look through camera, I suppose, and just put this where I want to. Now, if I go to perspective, you'll notice that there's a couple other um, gizmos here. I've got my distance gizmo like this, right? But I also have this rotation gizmo so I can rotate my highlights. You can see them changing here dramatically as I rotate this uh, area light. So I have a really long one here, or I could just go to more of a, a narrow one like that. So there's, you know, some nice little tools for creating the highlights there. And what's interesting is I can lock this directional constraint with this tool in with a locator if I want to. So I can drop the tool, but with this still selected, I can create a locator from the light hit, which is where that little blue circle was on there. And I could just hit that, create the locator. I can use two different types of just constraints, either the built-in set target that all lights have, the same as one, the same sort of constraint that camera has, or just a separate uh, uh, directional constraint that just a standard moto directional constraint. I'll just use set target create the locator, and there it is. So this light is now targeted to this locator. So if I move the locator, you know, the light is targeted to it, so it'll move with it. Now, same thing, if I move the light, it is aiming at the locator, right? So you're just sort of baking in those tools if you want to. I can also use Eteria's awesome uh, quick locators to change the size of that locator to make it a little circle instead of a big, ugly, giant plus sign. So we'll just do this really quick. I love Eteria Quick Locators. I think it's the best kit for Moto, and there is a whole video of it on Pixel Fondue if you want to use it. So let's pop on our other light, and then you know, I'll just turn on this whole backlight as well. So we've got a nice looking sort of Loki scene here. One other thing I want to show you is this uh, Create Reflector. So there's a few other sort of creation things here. We, we saw the From View, which is how we created all of these from the Perspective View, which I think is like the best feature of this whole plugin and worth 10 bucks all by itself. And we saw the neat little aiming features. You can also create uh, point lights at points, so you can select some points and hit the button and create point lights there. You can create cylinder lights at edges. Again, select some edges, you know, hit the button, got cylinder lights there. There's probably some other scripts for Moto that can do that, but it's all built into this nice little panel here. But the really cool one is reflector. So I can create a reflector and that's just a polygonal light, right? Just like a, uh, a Lumigon or whatever you want to call it, just a mesh light. So it gives me the option to add a gradient to it. I'll just keep it on even though Octane doesn't see Moto Gradient, so you can see how it works. So I hit Create Reflector, 
And it's going to show up right here in this uh, group that um, uh, First Light created at the bottom. You'll notice it's a procedural object. So I select the procedural mesh operation. I can control the size of it procedurally. So we can just make it you know, half as big if we want to, like that. And you can see it's intersecting. It's coming in. Let me just turn off my uh, isolation here. You see it is coming in at the origin and it's facing uh, Z. And what I can do with that is I can use it to, I can use these aim at service tools with this uh, reflector, just like I would with an area light, which is pretty cool. So I can hit place highlight and I can come on here to my geometry and just place the highlight right at the front. So let me actually change the material for this light so it shows up in, um, in Octane, this would be showing up if I were using the Moto Render, but Octane doesn't see gradient. So I'm just gonna turn the gradient off and I'll turn the material to uh, a luminous value of one right here. And you should see this uh, pop in when I do that. So there it is right there. And maybe I'll actually just use a an image here. So I'll use this little reflector image I have loaded in the scene. Let me just drag that there and turn that to a uh, luminous color. We'll, so you can see that change right there. And just want to make sure this is set to UV map, not a cubic map. So there we go. And again, I can just um, go back to my reflector. If I want to make it bigger, I can just go to a little procedural options here and make this say two and two. So I have a much bigger reflection here. Let me turn off everything else so you can see the reflector. Uh, you can see it right here in the viewport and you can see the effect right here in Moto. And you can also create an array, I guess, if you want to. Let me I actually tried this, so let's, uh, yeah, let's give it a shot. Let's do two and two, and there we go. I didn't even know it could do that. Actually, I kind of like that better, actually. It's a nice soft reflection on that. Let me turn on my key light and side light and rear light. I'm actually going to make this side one a little greenish as well, maybe even a little darker green, yellowish green, low-key sort of green. Something like that, just to make it a little more, a little more Loki, a little more talky talky Loki. Okay, so you know that's the basics of uh, this plugin. You can you can use place highlight and aim at surface to you know place your lights. You can bake in that uh, um, positioning and, and and targeting with a locator if you want to. You can oh the sticky locator option right here will actually create a con surface constraint on the locator to the geometry, which is pretty cool. So it's using built-in Moto um, constraints and operations to sort of enhance this kit. Uh, it's got a little nice little things. I can hide lights and, and locators right here from this panel. I can just pop over my item list from the panel. I have one other scene I want to show you just to show the uh, create from Polygon. So let me jump over here. This is just a PlayStation controller, again from um, Sketchfab. And so I will... Uh, uh, put the attributions for this um, in the comments below, not in the comments, in the, in the description below. And let me just, uh, let's see, why don't we just fire up Octane? And there is a HDR in the scene, just giving my base lighting. So you'll see there's this HDR right here. And the uh, environment power is turned down really low. So let me just turn it up to one so you can see what it is. So typically I like when I use product rendering, I sometimes like to have an HDR, just a room or something in there, just like if you're doing actual photography, something to, that reflections can pick up, but it's not gonna be my main lighting or hero lighting. So I'll often turn it down and then I'll just create some lights to, uh, so, you know, some area lights or some reflectors to sort of sculpt my lights and my product. So in this case, why don't I just do a couple quick um, lights from view here. So I'll just do one right here. We'll just do one from view. And we'll make this one sort of, maybe sort of warm like that and create light. And then I'll go to this side and do one um, that's kind of cool. So create one from view and I will make it sort of bluish like that and hit create light. And actually don't like my warm color. I thought that was too greeny. So let me just change that really quick from this first one. I think that was more orangey, less greeny. That's what I want. So something something like that. Okay, sort of a nice, okay, that looks fine. In fact, I can even um, turn these down just a little bit, maybe 1.5 or something like that. And then I'm going to create an array of lights using some polygons. So I've got this little uh, polygon mesh thing right here that I made. I just created like a sphere and deleted everything but these polygons. And I'm going to create an area light at every single polygon. 
So I'm going to go into polygon mode and it expects me to select the polygons I want to light at. I'm just going to select all of them. And then I'm going to create lights from polygon. So click that button. Again, you can pick whatever light you want. I'll do area light and uh, we'll just keep the intensity there and use instances is fine. Create lights and it's going to put them all here in my light group like this. And I think so from three to right there. I think that's all my area lights. And let's just make them a little bit smaller, like you know, maybe 0 0.25 by 0.25. Like so, I can hide my um, polygon uh, ring here. And you can see those purple area lights right there. Let me just crank up the intensity to like 8 or something like that. And you can see this little speckly thing I'm getting, this sort of nice light array. Often with car renderings, you'll see that. And actually, let me just turn them all off. You'll see, you know, what it's like when they're gone. And then when I turn them all back on, you get these sort of like speckly lights here. So again, this is just a quick example using uh, the, you know, lights from polygons. And this would take a while to make if you were to do it by hand. And I'm sure there's some other scripts out there that can do it, but it's nice to have them right here. And, you know, this thing could have been 10 bucks and just had the place highlight or aim at service tool. But instead, it's got all these nice little utilities and other tools built in. And it's just like the creating the area light from a view is just priceless. So for 10 bucks, I'm giving this a big old recommendation. And if you, even if you're just a casual moto renderer, it's so nice to use those, a couple of those features. So just run over to third guild and buy it. Support moto kit makers. Yum, yum.